All right, in, in a contract that we have been talking about, we have mentioned the word mutual ascension, both parties must agree, um, it is for a legal objective, so that creates an obligation for both of the parties, and that obligation is defined inside the contract. An obligation is the duty or the act that each party becomes legally responsible for within a contract. In the real estate world, the, the obligations seem pretty apparent, but let's go through them. Obviously, the buyer's obligation is to surrender money for the uh, freehold estate or the conveyance of the real property. The seller's obligation is to surrender the real property. Typically, it is with what we call clear title. Now, it can be transferred without clear title. That would have to be in the purchase agreement, and as you know, in our purchase agreement, we always ask for a general warranty deed, and without going too in-depth into that deed type, remember a general warranty deed provides the buyer with the protection of knowing that the seller is going to surrender the property free of all liens and encumbrances that the buyer can, like the taxes, the mortgage, any mechanics liens, there are some encumbrances that a buyer, that a seller cannot get rid of, like the easement of a shared driveway, a party wall easement if it's a condo, uh, things of that nature. So those can't get be getting rid of. But that is the seller's obligation. Now, if one of those parties fail to perform in their obligation, it is called a breach of the contract and a breach of the contract can result in one of the parties and they call that the non-breaching party to actually get compensated for the by the other side of the table or the breaching party okay this would result in a lawsuit now I've got some other notes over here the American legal system is divided into two sections We've got criminal justice and criminal code, and we've got civil justice. Criminal justice is when the government that brings a case against the defendant, like criminal code, is where uh, either the city versus so-and-so, the state versus so-and-so, or the government. In a civil case, it is where one citizen brings a lawsuit against another citizen. This would be the civil court. Now, in the real estate world, most of, if not all, of the court cases that we are going would get involved in would be civil court. It's one person filing against another person. The punishments of each one of these are also different. The burden of proof is also different. So those are, they all play out, and if you get involved, once again, remember I am not a practicing attorney, but I'm telling you, you should probably engage an attorney if one of your clients determines that the other side of the party has breached the contract and now you want to sue, all right? For criminal code, they can actually go to prison, all right? For a civil code, we do not punish them like that. You can't go to prison for civil court cases. Typically, what they fine you bada-bang, is money. That's what usually gets taken care of, okay? So if a party breaches that, they're going to end up going to court, and most real estate cases are actually heard in a civil court. Go in front of the judge, the judge hears both sides, he then makes a decision. One of the things the judge can render is this term called a suit for specific performance. A suit for specific performance is when the buyer or the seller fail to do what they're supposed to do, i.e. they didn't buy the house. That would be what the uh, buyer's failure would be. The seller would, hey, I can't clear the title, I can't sell you the house, 
that could be a specific performance as well. Now, one thing I want you guys to note, and maybe you've already been involved in this one time, is when the buyer all of a sudden decides he wants out of the agreement and the seller side says, hey, we're going to keep your earnest money. And you go, well, up yours, keep my earnest money and blow this popsicle stand. Actually, in line 56 of the Indiana Association of Realtors Purchase Agreement in the version 2020 form, you guys need to read that line because what it really says is the buyer could be subjected to the loss of earnest money and other damages to the fullest extent of the law. So the reality is a buyer that doesn't buy, we always think about losing that 500 or 1,000. The contract actually calls for the seller to have the option to actually sue in civil court for the entire price of the house. The entire price of the house. So this is something you probably need to make sure you tell your seller that if you just decide you don't want to buy the house, you are in jeopardy of losing your earnest money and more. All right? Do not forget those last two words because that significantly changes the outcome. You are subjected to potentially losing your earnest money and more should the seller decide to go to civil court case and sue you for specific performance because you signed the purchase agreement which specifically states that the seller has the fullest extent of the law in which to punish the buyer. Now, if the seller fails to perform and he gets sued by the buyer for a specific performance, the court can actually force the sale of the property. They can make that sale, uh, that seller uphold his deal and go through with it. I will tell you, in my very vast lawsuits that I've been in, involving clients in the real estate world or as an investor or as business or as a landlord, I have seen in one case, the judge forced the buyer to pay for the entire house. Now, it's $10,000 and it wasn't that big of a deal, meaning it's not two or 300. I know 10 grand is a big deal, but in the construed, or compared to all the other things in the world, the judge literally told the buyer, he said, I can't make you buy it, but I can make you pay for it. So he fined for the plaintiff, which was the seller, my client, in the full sum of the entire price of the house. So I have seen that happen once. I have never seen a seller be forced to sell his house. All right, so potentially it's possible but I have yet to see a seller actually be uh, court mandated to sell his house because of a sp specific performance issue, okay? So that is the obligation and what it means to each party. We're not done yet, <clears throat> we're gonna keep going. Let's talk a little bit about disputes and litigation follow on with what we were talking about. Remember civil cases, buyers and sellers have remedies beyond where you think. Most of us think, hey, it's an earnest money issue. It actually is a fullest extent of law, so it could be the complete sales price. Should something happen, you know, your buyer could be subjected to the entire sales price, not just his $500. Now, this is slightly different if you're in the property management world, then you're gonna to go to a small claims court, typically for a breach of a contract where the tenant fails to make the rental payment. So you're going to want to file a suit for eviction. This actually is in a small claims court. So it's a slightly different court that you than the civil court dealing with specific performance, all right? so. 
I know it stinks that you could potentially be called into court or your client can be called into court, but in the course of your career, if you're going to be around a long, long time, you're probably going to see this happen. Once again, I'm not a practicing attorney, but I would suggest that you probably hook up with one and get one kind of like on your payroll or be a friend of yours or something so you can pick up the phone and go, hey, what are we going to do? We need to in, uh, initiate a lawsuit or there has been one initiated and we need to defend ourselves, which ultimately is also stinks. Uh, I know in one particular case, I paid about $14,000 to prove I was innocent uh, and took about eight months of heartache and headaches and stress, uh, but literally came out as a not guilty verdict on a claim that I think obviously was asinine and apparently so did the judge, um, but it still cost money and time and effort. All right. So be careful of all the court litigation that is uh, possible with you and your client. Hold on. We're going to do another one.